The achievements in fitness, nutrition, and physical culture certainly shaped this era as one of the cleanest, healthiest, and most progressive in the history of bodybuilding. Without any chemical supplements or additions, bodybuilders in that time were purely natural, showcasing the true strength of their muscles and the true potential in their bodies. Because of this reason alone, most people see this era as one of the most important in the history of bodybuilding. Also known as old school bodybuilders from the days before steroids, these natural icons of bodybuilding have set great examples in their diet and exercise routines, showing everyone what a true genetic potential means. Vladislav Kucharchuk, or Bobby Pandor, is one of the most fascinating physical culturists of the late 19th and early 20th century. A gymnast by trade, who published little in the way of training material, Pandor is widely regarded as having possessed one of the finest physiques of his time. The fact that he claimed to have built it without the use of heavy weights adds to Pandor's mystique. Bobby and his brother Ludwig were champion gymnasts and went to England from Poland in the early 1900s with a sensational bar, posing, muscle control, and hand balancing act. Pandor's physique's popularity continued to build him a profitable income. This included swimming in Eugene Sandow's wake. His shows, incidentally, were not too dissimilar from Sandow's in that they combined muscle posing with feats of strength and athleticism. When artists could not afford Sandow's fees for posing, or simply couldn't wait for him to clear his schedule, they would hire Pandor instead. From 1907 to 1915, Bobby toured American vaudeville with his brother, and it was in the United States that Pandor appears to have made far more money than the time he spent in Great Britain. Although he rarely, if ever, was the headline act, he nevertheless was held in far more esteem by American journalists. Earl Liederman, one of the most significant muscle entrepreneurs of the 1920s, described Pandora's shows thusly. Pandor was very thickly muscled. His arms looked short because of his muscle density. He had sensational abdominals and great deltoids, while his legs were in similar proportions. His posing was done with simple ease and grace, yet every motion brought out the muscle or muscle groups exactly as he wished them shown. Although Pandora's early acts in the United States still centered on gymnastics, there is evidence that in time his performances evolved to include posing. In this regard, Pandor mirrored Sandow, whose own time in the United States saw him switch his act from feats of strength to strength acts and posing. One of the reasons why Pandor remains such a figure of fascination is the fact that he supposedly refused to use heavy weights in his training. He did use dumbbells, but only those weighing 10 pounds each at their heaviest. It appears that Pandora's training came primarily from his gymnastic work alongside a system of concentric tensing. One exception to his training was his leg work. Recognizing the need to train at least somewhat heavily, Pandora supposedly built his legs by carrying his brother up flights of stairs as fast as possible. At his peak, Pandora was said to have weighed 160 pounds at 5 feet 6 inches tall. He is reported to have had a 42 inch chest, 23 inch thighs, and 16 to 17 inch arms. Unfortunately for us, 
Pandor did not write down his programs or attempt to sell any system of exercise. For his contemporaries, there was no doubt about Pandor's physique nor his athleticism. Accordingly, it is reported that Pandor passed away either in his late 30s or his early 40s. Even at the end, his life was a mystery. He remains, for many of us, the sport's great enigma. Physique-wise, Gustav Fedesensky was said by many to be as impressive as Sandow, but because he is not as well known, did not get his due. Regardless, Fedesensky was certainly an exemplary strength athlete, as both his lifts and wrestling achievements show. Moving to Brno, Gustav became interested in many sports, specifically wrestling. As soon as he entered, he won the first prize and started to travel for sporting events within the country, defeating many popular wrestlers from Prague and German clubs in Brno. After he won the championship of Austria, Gustav realized that he is very powerful and can do the famous Continental Press with 308 pounds of weight. The Continental press was exactly what brought Gustav the first prize at the World Physique Championship in 1903. At six foot tall with 220 pounds, Gustav was one of the best built Victorian bodybuilders to every step on the scene. He had the perfect genetics for bodybuilding. However, Gustav Fristensky met his bitter end during the Great War when he was sent to a German concentration camp. Even though he suffered in health and survived the war, he died in 1957 at the age of 78. There is a statue of Gustav Lesensky in Prague with the title Mr. Czechoslovakia written beneath. Many of his medals are also on display. third most important bodybuilder of the pre-competition era is Max Sick, which is the pseudonym and a stage name. To this day, his real name remains unknown. What was interesting about Mac was his height. At only five feet tall, he had a reputation for one of the best trained champion bodybuilders. Starting from his studio and mastering a lot of tricks, Mac's greatest trick was the total muscle control flexing and moving each muscle of his body almost independently. This trick made Mac Sick famous and gave birth to the phrase rippling muscles. The Great War also took a toll on Mac Sick's life. It is safe to say that the world changed after him and put an end to an era known as the pre-competition era in bodybuilding. George Hackenschmidt, like Milo Steinborn, was a strength pioneer who had a huge influence on the way we lift. While Steinborn is often considered one of the founding fathers of how we squat today, the Steinborn squat, Hackenschmidt is usually credited as the originator of the bench press and hack squat. The bench press has become an upper body staple in most workout gyms while the hack squat is a common lower body accessory. George Carl 
Julius Hackenschmidt, helped establish and popularize both of these movements. His popularity at the time and his love for writing books helped spread the word on both of these movements. From his earliest years, Hackenschmidt devoted himself to physical development, particularly at the secondary science school, the Realschule of Dorpat, as Tartu was then known, where he took advantage of the gymnasium. He excelled in cycling, gymnastics, swimming, running, jumping, and weightlifting. His feats of strength astounded his teachers as he could lift a small horse off the ground and lift 276 pounds overhead, one-handed. In a wrestler's bridge, he could pull a 333-pound barbell from the floor to his chest and press it overhead, bridging it on his neck. In 1902, he jumped a hundred times over a table with his feet tied together. He set several records in weightlifting and was considered both the strongest and best developed man in the world. Hackenschmidt launched his professional career in Reval in the Governorate of Estonia at the time when contests were largely legitimate and lived most of his life in London, England, where he gained the nickname the Russian Lion. He is believed to be the creator of the professional wrestling version of the Bear Hug, as well as the person who popularized the Hack Squad, a deadlift with arms behind the body. He is known for his impressive strength, fitness, and flexibility, and later in life wrote many of the books on physical culture, training, and philosophy. Bernard McFadden was known for his teachings of physical culture, a combination of bodybuilding with nutritional and health theories. He also founded the long-running magazine publishing company McFadden Publications. He was the predecessor of Charles Atlas and Jack LaLanne and has been credited with beginning the culture of health and fitness in the United States. Bernard McFadden is known as the father of physical culture. His participation in this industry involved writing books and publishing magazines about developing strength and good health. His books and articles were popular in the beginning of the 20th century. The publications by Benar were so popular that they took the world by storm and even now are seen as the forerunners of modern bodybuilding magazines. Many of his books can now be read for free on the internet, like Physical Training from the year 1900, Vitality Supreme from 1915, and Eating for Health and Strength from 1921. These books contain many good exercises and hints on how to live a healthier life. McFadden was also known for his efforts in promoting and organizing various bodybuilding competitions on the other side of the Atlantic, leading to the discovery and development of one of the biggest names in bodybuilding, Charles Atlas.